to lead us in our Lord's Table Meditation this morning, brethren. I wanted to be in the first chapter of Colossians, verses 21 and 22. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Now this word that he used here to describe our condition prior to Christ, was, I thought was an interesting one, alienated. Mm -hmm. it's, this is a word that's commonly used in our day as someone who's either from a different country or they're from a different world entirely. This is, this is someone who uh, um, is, is, is lost in the culture that they're in. They're, they're completely out of touch. They're out of their element. They're foreign, even lost, uh, unable to uh, understand anything about what is around them. Now this is how we were to God, foreign. We were unable to have any significant kind of fellowship with God. Uh, just as those who speak a different language in the world, there was like a, a spiritual language barrier between, between God and man, so to speak, that existed as a whole. Now throughout the generations, there were men who were able to have somewhat of a fellowship with God. They were able to have some kind of understanding, and, and they obeyed. This, however, was because they received like a, a translation of sorts, so to speak. That they were able to rise above the rest of their generations in faith, not by virtue of them having a superior nature, but because they, they were given to see something. They were given a word that was like a, a translation that, that, that they were given. Now, this was uh, done within the context of this coming reconciliation in Christ Jesus. And this is a, uh, the other way that he said it, that they were en enemies in your mind by wicked works. Um, he speaks uh, of this individual participation in this separation that we all have played. Uh, al although we were born into this nature that was alienated from God, and on a certain level we didn't have any choice in the matter. This was passed down to us from Adam. There is not a one of us who did not choose to, par par to participate and live according to this nature. Will at, 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 at some point in time, anyone who has ever lived has willingly and intentionally chose to disobey God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were enemies in our minds. We, we didn't think like God. We all, on, on a fundamental basis, men without Christ, they want to do what they want to do regardless of what God has to say about it. And no matter how innocent your life prior to Christ may have seemed, it, 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 even if you've never entangled yourself in all of the obvious, outward, degenerate, sinful behaviors, the fact that, that you lived primarily to please yourself and not please God, you fall into this category. Uh, even if there's no uh, apparent outward manifestation of it, it, there's an unseen enmity that exists between a man and God outside of Christ. This, this is the truth of our condition without mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah, this, thank God this is not the end of the story. And this yes. correlates with the, the but now of what yes. Brother Jeremy just said. Yes. Yet now hath, hath he reconciled. Mm -hmm. And in the same chapter, he speaks of it this way, that we were translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. So what, what was once foreign, what we once did not desire or seek after, is now familiar. Even more so than that, it's actually our heart's desire. It's actually our, our sole purpose in life to seek God and not seek, not seek our own. And this is where there's been traditionally much confusion in the religious world. Our reconciliation was not a mere legal pronouncement, which it is that, but that's not all that it is. It's an experiential joining. To, to be born again is exactly that. It, to, to begin a new life that is entirely unlike the experience of our prior, prior life. Amen. It's, it's, it's not a metaphor. It's not just a, a figure of speech or a word picture. It is a reality. It is the truth. We were once alienated and now we are made fellow citizens of the heavenly country. We were once enemies in our minds by wicked works and now we are faithful servants who follow in the good works that the Lord has prepared for us to do. There, there's a real change in affection, a turning of the heart. Amen. Uh, a, a re, and because of this, there's a repositioning of priorities. What you live uh -huh. for, what you think and, and, and desire is, is changed. Now, where there is need for a translation, there must be a translator. Yeah. And this is the, well, the primary reason why we have set this up this time aside this morning at this table. Uh, this is the means by which this happened. In the body of his flesh through death. 
Now, I, um, this correlates with uh, the eighth chapter of Romans in chapter um, chapter eight, verses two through four. And what the law for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Now, what He said first here for what the law could not do, uh, God demonstrated this in in a real life exhibition, as it were. This He didn't just say this; He actually showed it. That, ma that man without God cannot work himself out of this alienation and this enmity. Even in the, under the best circumstances, when men are put in a nation of people who are set apart, God created this nation. He, he called out Abraham. He, he set the circumstances in place in which the nation uh, um, multiplied and, and was made. And, and he actually delivered them from Egypt. He, he, he sustained them in the wilderness. He, he gave them a word. He gave them a law unlike any of the other nations. He gave him promises. He gave them commandments. He, he actually gave them a system by which if they were to do exactly what he told them to do, they'd be righteous. They, 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 would, they would get what they were promised. But they weren't able to do so. Mm -hmm. and, and this is... this. What is is shown to us in experience in history, but this is also something that we all learn by experience. That as we set ourselves to do what it is that God told us must be done, we we yes. find out on an, on an individual level that mm -hmm. we we fall short. So what the law was not able to do, God, and sending His own Good Son. God, yes. he, said, he said, "This is I like the way He." said it in Isaiah here, and I looked and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation. Yes, amen. So this is God. This is what God did. God made a new covenant. Uh, unlike the covenant that was made before, uh, what the law could not do because of the weakness of man to fulfill his end of the covenant that was made, um, God could, struck a covenant between him and Christ, as it were. One that has no chance of yielding anything but glory and satisfaction. And, and, and seeing the way that God did it, we're able to, it's, it's like a manifestation of his wisdom. This is him showing his wisdom to principalities and powers that are looking on. But he did it, he set him in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. This is how he condemned sin in the flesh. Now the transgression, the transgression was done in the body of a man, and the punishment had to be exacted against a man. Yes. And the, the law demonstrated this you know, pretty fully that the blood of bulls and goats it could not this could not please God. For us to be spared the wrath of God, for us to be delivered and redeemed, it required that a man stand in our place. And yet it's it, it's not merely that simple. It could not just be any man. We have to look towards the end of this purpose here. The, the, the entirety of the purpose was not just to redeem for the sin of man, but it was it was looking forward towards this creation of this this race of man. This man, uh, who who is able to do this sacrifice, he must pass through the cross and yet stand as our representative as he heaven, ensuring our place there. The goal was not merely to atone for the sin of humanity, but but. Uh, to, to remove it out of the way in, in uh, preparation for the next phase of the purpose, so to speak. Not only was Jesus the perfect candidate to bear our sin and iniquity on the cross, but he is also the perfect candidate to be our advocate on high, yes. to be our intercessor and to be our, our, our on the right hand of God. And he is also perfectly suited to be head over all things to the church. Now, as we come... To the table this morning, brethren, let us glory in the, in the mercy of our God and the provision of Christ mm -hmm. and what He has done on our behalf. That, that what what we we could not do, He has done. Not to, to pay the debt that we could not possibly hope to pay, but to also lead us in the way that we could not even see it if it were not granted for us to do so. Yes. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for your Son, Jesus Christ. We, we glorify you, Lord, and what you have done on our behalf. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us this day to be able to, to look to Christ more fully. This in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.